A good EMT or paramedic is, is basically having a skill set to recognize a problem and rectify that problem fairly quickly. This is very, very hard work. It is very physical, it is mentally challenging, and a turnover rate is high. EMTs put their lives in danger to help people every day. In the future, their gear will work to keep them safe. A light, breathable layer will protect from gunshots, knives, and needles. While sensors will monitor their health status and location, this will allow individual EMTs to monitor their own fitness and allow commanding officers to see the status of all responders in the field. When responding to a call, we. What we see on our pager or on our computer screen is not always what we're going to see when we get there. We're all about speed in EMS and being underprepared or unprepared for whatever it is you're walking into is not only a detriment to the patient, but it's a detriment to your patient care. Future EMTs will have access to patient data on the way to the scene and time to prepare in a self-driving ambulance. We have a respiratory priority one at 123 Washington. Daughter is reporting collapse and trouble breathing. Sally, can you show us your father's face? Yeah, he's breathing fast. There's a history of CHF. He's likely in failure. We should bring the CPAP. Yeah, he's up on the third floor in about 250. We should also bring the hoverboard. Because the EMTs will know more about the incident when they arrive, they'll be better prepared to bring the right equipment and quickly start treatment. On scene, a patient tracking sticker will read key biometric data. EMTs will be able to access this data, monitor vitals, and add information on treatments through a wrist-worn smart device. This data will be instantly accessible by the receiving hospital. And his vitals look good. He's breathing easier. Let's get him to the truck. Getting folks out of buildings is probably one of the more, if not most, challenging parts of this job. The impact of lifting somebody over time is simple. It's, it's just like any mechanical gear or working piece of anything, not just human, but mechanical. Eventually, it gets stripped down and breaks. Future EMTs will be able to lift and move patients easily without sacrificing their long-term health. The difference between a, a more routine daily call and a mass casualty incident would be in a routine daily call, you're, you're rushing to the scene to try to render aid as quickly as you can to the patient. In a mass casualty incident, you're rushing to the scene to try to organize the chaos. We're gonna have multiple serious victims. We're gonna need to coordinate a lot of efforts early on. And the priority there is getting these critical patients removed off the scene as fast as we can. Major incident on Highway 55 at exit 17. Bus collision involving three large vehicles. I see fires on the scene administering patient stickers. Initial numbers indicate phase three incident with 37 patients, eight critical. Police have shut down traffic. Access and staging will be on the eastbound side at exit 12. Future EMTs will plan for incidents in transit using data available from the scene. When we arrive on scene, I'll work the bus. Okay, I'll handle the group on the north side. In EMT school and paramedic school, they always teach you, you know, monitor the vitals every three to five minutes for an unstable patient and every 15 minutes for a stable patient. You don't always have time for that. The location feature will guide EMTs to the most critical cases and allow them to instantly see the patient's vitals. Uh-oh, you see that status change on Nancy? Yep, I triaged her. I'll go see what's up. If another patient's status takes a turn for the worse, EMTs will be alerted so they can care for those with the most urgent needs. Okay, the incident is beginning to de-escalate. We should have sufficient resources on scene to release some units back into city service. No matter how many times you respond to these type of incidents, you always wonder, will I be able to live up to the expectation? Will I be able to perform to a level that will be able to save lives? We still need that individual that has to have hands on, has to think about things. But if someone could kind of do that thinking for you and that monitoring end of the business, then that frees you up to do a lot more good work, a lot more good pre-hospital care for patients. So the more targeted and accurate we can be with that, one patient, 10 patients, 100 patients, the better we as a system and as a community will be.